I learned so much um, being a FedEx ground contractor. I learned rules, policy and procedure, and most importantly, safety. And I'm grateful for that experience because it, it taught me now what I needed to be at this level and this magnitude. One day um, I had a, a guy, he was like, I need to ship my stuff. And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll ship it for you. No, I don't use FedEx. I don't, I use air cargo. I ship it air freight. I said, you do what? He was like, I ship it air freight. He was like, you need to be an air freight forwarder. And that was all I, that was all it took. But it was the air freight that really took me to the next level. Hustle fam, hustle fam. And we are back with another amazing episode. And oh my gosh, I am so <laughs> excited today. I have the queen in the building, y'all, Miss Tremel. She told me to call it Tremel K, but I'm just say Tremel Riches Kokoye, right? Yes. All right, all right. The 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 CEO of Pronto Shipping. Yes. Right. Uh, man, we're gonna talk about so much today because you specialize in everything from trucking to uh, warehousing to uh, air freight. Air freight. I don't even know where to start with you. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, because you do so much. I don't know where to start, but I know where we always start is we start from the beginning. Oh, God. Right. I can tell you about that. <laughs> all right. So listen, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. By the way, we are on location. So, you know, we're here in the building. So listen, again, thank you for being on the show. You're I appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. We, we've been trying to do this for what, two years two now? Two years, two years. So we finally made it happen. Yes. All right. So y'all in for a treat, I promise y'all. But let, let, let's get into it. Let's start from the beginning, Tramel. First of all, where are you from? Tell us a little bit about your background. Let, let's, let's get into it. Okay, so I am from, well, I was born in California, grew up in Houston, and um, I, just a regular student in high school, went on to Texas Southern University, got my undergrad, then went on to UT, and I got my master's in social work. Okay. And I got licensed as a social worker. And then let's keep going. Let's keep going to 2013. Okay. That's when I opened up Pronto. Okay. Did I think it was going to grow to this big? No. All right, Hustle Fam. Listen, y'all. I am here live on location at OTR Capital. Happy to announce our new strategic partnership with OTR Capital. I'm here with Grace Moore. My friend, how are you, Grace? Awesome, it's so good to have you here. When, when we aligned with somebody, aligned with a brand, we wanted to make sure that we had the right people standing behind us and, and that could help our community and kind of take them further along in their journey because you know we can only bring them so far, right? We need to create those strategic partnerships to take them to the next level. And that's what I think that this relationship and this partnership is gonna do. Grace, tell the people a little bit about OTR and what you guys do. Yeah, thanks, Ramel. So we are a factoring company you know, we've been doing this for 10 years. We're dedicated to trucking companies' success and offering tools and services to help them to continue to succeed. Education is so important to us for our clients and helping them continue to grow their business. I know we have similar missions, you know, um, we really do care about trucking companies and we're both from a trucking background. You know, OTR isn't a financial services company coming off of a bank where, you know, we're based out of transportation and third party logistics company and you yourself, you know, ran trucking and had a CDL. So yep. it's like, you know, for us, it's just, it's amazing to be able to come together in this way. The, the, the culture here is awesome. Um, I love working with you guys. I love the people here. And it's great, man. I think we could do some some beautiful things together, create epic content, add epic value. And I'm really excited and looking forward to doing this with you guys. I mean, it took me a long time to really, you know, partner with someone in this way. And I decided to do it with you guys because I feel that you're the right company to add value to, to our audience. We completely agree. We're super excited, thrilled to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Truck and Hustle OTR, we're now together. We're locked in. Hustle fam, you know we love y'all. If you smell something burning, it's only your desire. Did I ever imagine it would be two locations no, um, but I just knew I have a strong work ethic, very, very strong work ethic. I will work 24 hours a day to get where I need to be. 
Okay, got you. So you you took a big leap there. We we gonna bring it back a little bit, right? <laughs> so you said you were born in California. How how long did you live in California? I was just born there. Okay, so baby, so just a baby, and then got my you. mom got then married to, to my dad. Okay, and I grew up in Houston. All right, grew, I grew up, up in Houston. Grew up in Houston. What like particular area? Is there like a? I, I know Houston has like a bunch Houston, of different Houston. I graduated right? from Worthing High School. Worthing High School. What yeah. type of student were you? Um. I really was not much of, I was just an average student. Okay. Just an average student, but I always had hustle. Okay. I always had hustle. All right. I worked at Kmart at 16 years old. Just always had hustle. All right. Got you. So aside from, tell me a little bit more about your hustle. You're working at a young age. What else did you do as a kid? Did you play any sports? Did you do anything else? My sister, my identical twin sister, Roxelle Richards, she played sports. I was always a cute twin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got you. Got you. Got you. All right. So so, so 16, you're working, you're kind of making your way. Then you said you went to college, right? Yes. I okay. went to and Texas Southern. Texas Southern? Texas Southern University, okay. undergrad. And right. then after that, I went got my master's from the University of Texas at Arlington. Okay. I have my master's degree in social work. Okay. So tell me about college days. Any, any? Yes, I enjoy college. Now, okay. college, I enjoy college. You meet a lot. You have make a lot of great relationships in college. So I enjoyed that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got you. So after college, what do you do? So I was just working. I was just working a job. I and you said you, you got a degree in what? I'm sorry to cut social you Social work. Social work. Social work. Okay, so after college, did you get into social work? Yes, I did. Okay, so I worked ahead, several story. jobs as a social worker. And then one day, my last job I worked, um, I said, you know what? Enough of me working for someone else. So me and my husband were arguing. We were going down Chimney Rock. We was arguing, arguing. I was like, I'm quitting this job. I'm opening my own business. And no, Tremel, you can't do that. I was like, Watch me. <laughs> right. We found a location. And I said, that's the, that's the spot right there. Look at the traffic. Look at the traffic. And there's no shipping place. And I said, and you're going to do taxes, Ben, because Ben, my husband's real smart. And I said, you're going to do taxes there. Okay. And so the birth of Pronto began. Oh, okay. So, so, so real quick. So you, you knew you wanted to open up your own business. Yes. Right. But you said... You're driving down Chimney Rock, Chimney you said, Rock, and you're looking at different buildings. Did looking at different buildings, and I said, "I'm going to open up my own company." How did you? What made you say you want to do a shipping company? Where'd that come from? Okay, so I looked at the location. This was in 2013. This okay. is like before the social media craze and all of that. Okay, and I'm looking. I said, "There's no place to ship anything." So I said, "Ben, while you're doing taxes, I'm gonna go ahead and do the shipping." Okay. So we're going to have multiple things going on, you know. Did, did you know anybody else who was in shipping or I in I had to learn everything. Okay. Everything. I did not have a me. Got gotcha. you. Could you imagine? <laughs> I had to learn about air freight. I had to learn about trucking. I had so many mistakes, so many caught. Like, I had to learn. It was just like, I had to learn everything. Right, right. Now, I got you. So, but what's interesting to me is you come from social worker background, yes. but you're thinking about shipping. Like, yes. as a social worker, what would <laughs> what make you think exactly? about shipping? <laughs> that's, that's, what, I'm, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying so, to make that connection. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? Social work and education teaches you how to think. Okay. You see how I opened up a company and I knew how to think. Okay. I knew, hey, I'm driving. There's nowhere to ship. I'm looking at the demographic, the diversity in that area of Chimney Rock and the Galleria. This is a perfect location. Gotcha. To open up something like this. So and boy, at, did I open. So <laughs> at, at that point, who would be who would be your competition at that point? Was there, were there it any was other FedEx, shipping so places? So I became, I was FedEx right up the street. Okay. And so. Um, just the FedEx of the child, I became a FedEx authorized ship center, DHL authorized ship center. And then people were coming to me shipping and then they would have large stuff, huge, large things. And I said, you know what? Um, I was talking to someone. They said, you need to go into air freight. And I'll, I'm the type of person, you just tell me something one time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it and I'm gonna run with it. Okay. And that's when I started researching. Air freight. Air freight. Okay. Got you. So, and so, so you, so you saw, so, okay. So the only people that you could really model was like big companies like FedEx. That's it. But that, FedEx that, is, is known for small packages. Okay. They won't ship anything like a car. Some stuff you have to put on a plane. When it comes to million dollar art pieces, you cannot put that on a truck. Okay. Diamonds. Freight that is very valuable. They go on a plane. You, you you can't. Okay. They even you can even ship a horse, you know the the the, the horses, um the race horses that are like in Qatar that they race them. 
They go on airplanes. Mm, okay. Okay. You see? You gotcha. got to get it there fast. You can't put a horse in a closed-in container. Right. <laughs> that would, that wouldn't work out too well. No, you can't. So you so so that was my niche. Okay. And so, boy, did I make it. <laughs> so 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 first you started off shipping like regular small packages. Regular small packages. So you were kind of competing with the FedEx. It wasn't right? even competing. I was a FedEx authorized ship center. So they would send me. You know, hey, go down there. She's still open. Okay, so stop there. So you became a FedEx authorized ship center. So how does that process work? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I just applied for it. And you just applied for it? I just applied. I mean, pe- people may not know that information. You could yeah, just I literally just, have a location, a brick and mortar, brick and, and say, mortar, I want to become an authorized FedEx shipper. ship center, and then they have to approve you. Now, this is a catch-22. Okay. They have to approve you based on the location, and is there a need? Now, see, this was back in 2013. Okay. So there was a need. Now, I don't it know. may not be the same it's as not easy. The same, okay. Not easy. So, so, so at that time, you just you said because I'm I'm building a story here. Okay. So you said, all right, I want to open up a business. You said I want to open up a shipping business, right? Correct. You said, what's the fastest way to open up a shipping business, right? I, I'm I'm Tramel. I'm not yes. a big large <laughs> not corporation, big, so right? How can so I, how can I open up that shipping business? You said I could partner with somebody. I part you partner. You partner you with partner, FedEx. Partner with FedEx. You okay. partner with DHL. And believe it or not, in business, when you get to a certain level, partnerships are very, very strong, and then you will feed off of one another. Okay. So it was at a time where um, I remember the FedEx right up the street. They wouldn't ship certain items, and they would say, "Go right down the street to Pronto. She'll ship it." Mm. You know, so I was shipping, you know, like of course hairspray and things of that nature. That's has- hazardous. So of course, I have a mentor. His name is Larry, and he does the hazmat packaging. Okay. So things that they weren't shipping at the time, I would ship. Okay. Okay. You know? Got you. Can you tell us a little bit about? Like financially, like what type of money were you making to ship products? Just to give us an idea what that business makes. Are you making small margins per product? Or how, how does that I business was making model work? Very small part, you know, just I wasn't making that much. Okay. It was the air freight. Okay. That really took me to the next level. Got you. So at that point when you're shipping like the smaller products, you're not really making a lot of money, but you find this niche. I and, found my niche. And you said somebody told you, hey, you should ship air freight. Yes. Who was that person and why so, did they tell you that? So- <laughs> okay, so one day um, I had a, a guy. He was uh, he came in. He was he was from Qatar. Okay, he was like, I need to ship my stuff, and I was like, Sure, I'll, I'll ship it for you. No, I don't use FedEx. I don't. I use Air Cargo. I ship it Air Freight. I said, You do what? He was like, I ship it Air Freight. He was like, You need to be an Air Freight forwarder, and that was all. I, that was all it took. Okay, so I immediately went through that whole process. And, and got my air freight forwarding license. Okay. And then it spread like wildfire. He referred me everyone. I was shipping so much then. I was, they knew me at the air freight terminals. Got I was you. shipping everything. So, everything. so so he came to your, your business? To ship a DHL package. Okay, got you. And then, and then he <laughs> and started talking about- And I shipped the DHL. He started talking about the other things and that he has yes, to ship. And he and said he, he doesn't use. Yeah, and he said, I don't use that. I don't, I, you need to be an air freight forwarder. Uh, and he was like- and he's like, you know, and he just blew me off. <laughs> right. And uh, and so I went, went through that whole process and got my air freight forwarders license. Okay. And then that was, that was. That was a start. That was the jump. That was the that jump. That was the jump that I needed. Okay. So talk to me about becoming an air freight forwarder. What does that, for someone listening who's interested in that, like what kind of, what does that take compliance wise? What yeah, you, it's very, you, you regulate it through TSA. Okay. So it's not something that you can just jump in. Okay. They have to approve you. Okay. And there's financials, there's disclosures, there's a lot of things um, that come into play on whether or not they're going to approve you. Okay. So it was just not nothing that you can just go and just open. No. How, how long does that process take? Um, back then, it took me from the time I submitted my application, did all the paperwork, all the documents. Um, it took me about a little over eight months. About eight months. Eight and, months. And do you remember like what the costs were in terms of all the paperwork and everything to kind of no, get started? No, I did all that? my own paperwork. Oh, you did everything yourself? All my own paperwork. And okay. There was no cost. It was just trying to get approval. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got you. So let me. And then they have to come out and inspect your place and this and this. So how many other air freight forwarders were there in the area? None. 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 I was the only one. So you were monopolizing this air freight air freight uh, business space, right? Okay, cool. So now you said at this point things kind of jump. Things goes crazy. Things were jumping. Things were jumping. 
And then I would use trucks to take my shipments. This is where the trucking came in. Okay. See, I, I, I'm a shipper. Remember, right, 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 let's, right, right. let's get you're, down to what I really you're, am. You're a shipper. Okay. I'm a shipper. Okay. Then the trucks came. Okay. I'm not like the traditional jumped and bought a truck. Right, no. Right. And I'm glad I did it that way. If I could go back, I'm so glad I did it that way. Okay. There's Okay, so there is what I would say um, in transportation. There's air freight which is first, then there's ocean, which is second, there's rail, which is third, and then the trucks are at the bottom is ground. Right. That's the order of operations for transportation. Got you. So air freight is at the top of the supply chain. Got you. Got you. Okay, cool. So now you become this air freight forwarder, right? How do you get the word out to where, first of all, where were people going before to ship their air freight. That's what I and, and, and like Because all of a sudden, like you said, your business started exploding. So now people are coming out to Woodwork. So what were they doing before they found you? And if, well, first, uh, you can answer that question. And then the second question is, um, oh, h- how did you find them? Like, how did you start to market The yourself? location. Okay. My location is prime. In that location that I'm in on Chimney Rock, and it's still open. Okay. Um, it's a prime location, very diverse location. And so a lot of people are coming from all over, moving into that area. And I remember having several clients, they would go to the medical center for cancer treatment and they would need someone to ship their home things back to them. You see? Right. So they can't, FedEx is not going to ship furnitures and this and this. They're just not. Right. And so they have to use the air freight forwarder. Okay. So you're marketing yourself as an air freight forwarder. At this point, are you still doing small packages too? Or are you just kind of like some a little bit on the side? A little bit on the side. Right, right, right. But for the most part, you're (laughs) focusing on this air freight. So Okay, got you. So give us an idea. You just now said like furniture. What are some other things that are that go on air? air Um cars. Okay. Um I I helped um my mentor Larry out. Um on some air freight, some some oil field samples. Him and I work together on that. That's hazardous. Okay. So you definitely have to get with somebody who knows how to package hazmat. And so him and I work together on a lot of things. So um, there's all different. They even had chickens. At the, <laughs> <laughs> when I went to the terminal one day. Chickens. Uh, chickens. Right. Can you believe chickens? That's crazy. They have to go on a plane. Okay. Um, um, cars that are very high in value. Um. Was it? it was some sort of Tessarosa, like this expensive car. Okay. They don't put you, you, you can't put that on a container. They want that right. on a plane. On a plane. Yeah. So, so so you can get an account. So for me then I um I don't know if I should say this or not, <laughs> but for of me course you, you have your you can get an account maybe with Cargo Lux. Now now they're not giving accounts. Okay. Now it's it's you can they're not giving accounts. But again, I've been in the game so long. So right. you get you an account maybe with Cargo Lux. And you'll be able to ship where you need to ship. Okay, got you. So on their freighter planes, they have freighter planes. Okay, so so you're you're as an air freight forwarder. Could you just explain what your job is? I mean, you're you're like a, the middleman or the, the middle, middle woman. So who are you? Who are you connecting? And how does that? So you create work? you create your own airway bills. Once you become an air freight forwarder, you create your own airway bills. What's an airway bill? Because <laughs> that's that's talking over my head. I'm I, sorry, I don't understand what so, that is. So you create your own manifest. So I have to create my own manifest who's shipped to the consignee, where's it going, and do all the customs um, things that need to take place on the airway bill. And then you ship it out. Okay. So you ship from airport to airport. Okay. So that that will that's what I would do. Ship from airport to airport and then someone else will go and pick up. Um, they would pick up their belongings either from the airport themselves or I would arrange for a courier on that end to pick up their belongings there and take it direct to their house. Okay. So are you shipping things out of the Houston area only? Or are you shipping things like nationwide? When you air freight, you're shipping from maybe Houston to airport to Nigeria. To another you, airport. You're doing a whole nother country. Right. As an air freight. Forward. But, but you would, but you would only be focusing on this area. Like there weren't people calling you from like, let's say New Jersey and saying, Hey, no. I need something shipped. No, it would just be people who kind of walk into your facility. Right. And the, and I would mainly focus on Nigeria, Qatar, you know, different, different countries, Europe. I've shipped to Europe before. Um, I've shipped to India before. Okay. You know, just, I had in the war and believe it or not, customers are your biggest referral source and your growth of your company. 
they would constantly come. Oh, my friend used you. Can you ship my stuff? My friend used you. My friend. You. And then you get a name for yourself. Mm. You know, gotcha. believe it or not, you get a name for yourself. So, so you do a, good business and they will trust you. About how long did it take you to kind of establish yourself as, you know, a, a force in, in air freight in the area? Like after you got started. 2013, 2014, 2015, I was heavy. So by 2015, you were heavy. Heavy so, in so, so when you say heavy, can you give us an idea, like how much packages you're moving or like just, just so we could understand, put it in context. Like what, what does that mean? Like when you were at that point? Um, so at the, I don't, you know what? I've, I've been working in my business so much. <laughs> you guys, right, right, so right. everything it's, is it's, kind of a blur. And, and, I'm, and I'm talking so about like much. seven, eight years ago too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So, so but I'm trying so to still much. get, if, You're trying if you to remember build anything. That story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can remember, like I have a file cabinet and I have, I keep all of my customers there. Um, so I could just remember they calling me, Hey, can you ship here? Calling, getting a quote. Um, and then I do the correct airway bills. Now, however, this year, I, I, do, I do have an account with Southwest Airlines, so I will ship through them. So I have birthday cakes that I ship oh, through wow. Southwest Airlines. Wow. Um, tires, I'm going to call them this week and see if I can get some tires shipped. Some stuff you just have to put on the plane. Okay, got you. And you, some stuff you, you don't want to put, like if a, a air freight, you can get it there the same day. You can get a wedding cake the same day where it needs to go, and it won't be all crushed or tumble. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, some stuff you just have to put. Um, I got a call recently about shipping a body. Um, shipping a body? A body. A cadav cadaver? Well, someone passed away yeah. in a third world country, and they called me and said, hey, can you help ship, ship my cousin's body oh, from, uh. from Dominican Republic here? And, of course, I said, no, I can't do it, but let me refer you somebody else who can ship it from the Dominican Republic to Houston as an air freight forwarder. You do have to be IATA certified for it to come from from out of the country into, into to the United States. You do have to then become IATA certified. So not only do you have to have your air freight forwarder's license, you have to then become IATA, which is another regulation that you have to have and certification that you have to have. But a lot of girls that go in the D Dominican Republic and they get their bodies done. Well, unfortunately some of them don't make it. Oh, wow. So that was like that situation. Yeah. Oh man. That's, that's yeah. crazy. So those okay. bodies have to go on the plane. Wow. So some stuff you just, the mode of transportation has to be an airplane. Right. So you see like a bunch of different things. You get all kind of calls. Once you become an air freight forwarder, you get all kind of calls. Okay. Got you. All right. So you, you, you start growing, Pronto as an air freight forwarder. And then, and then I started going to the air freight terminals, and I started seeing trucks. And I was paying a trucker then to come pick up my stuff. I said, I'm going to get my own truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got you. So that's how we kind of pivoted into trucking. And that's how we pivoted into trucking. So, so, so somebody is coming to pick up your, your packages. My stuff. Your stuff that you have to bring over to the to the. So, so they're actually bringing the stuff here. They they would bring them. I would have them bring them to my warehouse. Oh. So the Chimney Rock location. Y'all follow me. Y'all see? You remember my, we, my little yeah, warehouse? Yeah, I used to yeah, yeah, yeah. Chimney Rock. I got you. I used to say, drop your stuff in the back in my warehouse. Okay. We'll package it later. Okay. And so that's what I would do. Got you. Okay. And then you'd have the truck, a truck driver a truck, come bring that it to the airport. Yes. That's exactly what I would do. Okay. Got you. So keep on telling the story. And so then I said, let me get my own truck. And then I got my own authority. And then I became a FedEx ground contractor. Mm. FedEx ground contractor. I was with FedEx ground for, I learned a lot from FedEx ground. I learned how to run a, a trucking company. Okay. And then I sold that contract and then I went federal and never looked back. Got you. How, how was it? Was it difficult to get, become a FedEx ground contractor at that time? Well, back then, um, it's relationships, mm -hmm. and I got a contract. I didn't have to purchase my contract. Okay. Now you can purchase a FedEx ground contract. Correct. You know, but I didn't. I didn't have to. Okay. I, okay. I know some people. <laughs> know some people. You know some I people. I know some people. All right. Got so you. So back then, I didn't have to. I became a FedEx. And FedEx ground, I learned so much um, being a FedEx ground contractor. I learned rules, policy, and procedure, and most importantly, safety. Um, I learned so much and I, and I'm grateful for that experience because it, it taught me 
now what I needed to be at this level and this magnitude mm. and running a full logistics company and how safety is number one and everything. You need to be able to count those hours of service. The hours of service make sure that that driver is not driving down the road sleepy. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah. So um, everything kind of worked in God's time and how it needed to be. Yeah, it, it, everything worked out kind of together and it, you were just building it as you went along. Building. So so you get so you get your first truck. Tell me about, because that's obviously something new now. Tell oh, me about man, that experience. Oh, man, my first truck. Oh, it was a disaster. <laughs> what, 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 what happened? What happened? Oh, Tell me God, about it. I, it's so many mistakes. And since we here, I put all those mistakes right here, y'all. <laughs> right here. Go right here to my website. It's in English and Spanish. No Look doubt. at there. English no www.thetransportationacademy.com when I wrote this book it was therapy for me wow. literally when I wrote it wow it was therapeutic for me I said it all I said everything I talked about the finance and how they had and they will put fixed interest rates that are extremely high in the cost of a truck so your truck note may be two thousand dollars a month but only 200 of it goes to the principal of the truck. Right, right. That's a problem. That's not good. $1,800 is in financing. Yes, I talk about those financing companies in this book. Yeah, yeah. Amir. <laughs> so, so, so. Is, <laughs> Equipment is, financing. <laughs> so, so is, is that's what happened to you, I'm yes, assuming? Yes, yes. First time around? What, yes, so, first time around. So you financed your first truck? Financed my first truck. Will I ever tell you to buy a truck? No, mm. never buy a truck. You better lease you a truck. Okay. Okay. The mechanics, first of all, will take advantage of you. I had a mechanic list on my website, but I've recently just took it down. Right. You know why? Because those mechanics are shady. Mm. They will never. I had an incident when one truck, a mechanic was like, yeah, I replaced all of your fuel injectors. Took the truck to Freightliner. Only two fuel injectors was replaced. <laughs> right, right, right. And you charged me thirty eight hundred dollars. Wow, wow. So they they were taking advantage of you. Yes. They, they're trying to catch you coming and going. Coming. Did, did, and going. did you did you have anybody any any mentorship or anybody to help you out? I didn't have nobody. This was back then. I didn't have nobody. Right, right, right. I had nobody, and it was just like I remember one year with. Because at that time, this was 20, 2015, 2016, I was running seven trucks. Okay. I owned all seven trucks. Okay. Can you imagine having seven trucks breaking down on you? <sighs> nah, that's crazy. One year in maintenance, I think in 2017, I spent over $100,000 in maintenance. Right, right. Now, now. That was it for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough. That was enough. Now, I'm leasing my trucks. Okay. And boy, oh boy. It's, it's better. It, oh my God, it's, it's better oh my God. on the leasing side. Guess how much money I have spent in maintenance since I have been leasing from Ryder and Penske. Guess how much? Y'all ready? Zero. Zero. Yep. <laughs> Zero in maintenance. Right, right, right. Zero, which is why I tell all of these new people, why are you buying a truck? Mm. Go through the process and lease your truck on. I did. I was with FedEx Crown. I leased my Pronto trucks. How do you think I came up with seven trucks? I wasn't on seven trucks on a low board. Right. I was. I had a contract. Mm. So when you have a contract, you have dedicated route. So it was okay for me to have seven trucks because one thing FedEx is going to do, they're going to keep that truck moving. They're going to keep that truck going. It's called continuity of freight. And the freight has to go. You think I'm going to get seven trucks and be on a low board? That's called suicide of your money mm. why would i do that right right so so let's let's talk about how you built up to the seven trucks so you started with one and that one was originally just to commute the the, the air freight the air freight and then once i got it with fedex it was like right 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 <laughs> <laughs> so you so you become a fedex con ground contractor right so what so what was the the spark that made you say you know what i want to make this thing bigger than just the commute from my uh, warehouse to the airport. I want to start growing a trucking company now. What made you want to do that? 
Um, because they kept giving me contracts. <laughs> I kept getting awarded dedicated routes. Okay. And Why? Why were they giving you contracts? Because they just they thought because you Because I know how to run a company. Cool. Not because I was cool. <laughs> Not at all. No, because saying, my no. service, I had no service failures. Oh, okay. No okay. service failures. No, but but I'm saying before that, because your rich, original truck was just... Just for Pronto. And, it, and then you got the contract, so... That same truck you were running for FedEx too? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yes. You're so smart. I, I'm, I just got to yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I put it together. You call me out. <laughs> I was running both, okay? <laughs> I got I got to put it together. <laughs> How do you know? We, I, we gotta, I was running both. <laughs> <laughs> FedEx and my own authority. Okay. Hey, so oh, God, listen, I said, I listen, busted, statue, no. statue of limitations. <laughs> you, okay? you know what I'm saying? Statue of limitations. I sold the contract it's, it's now. Done. It's done. It's all done. You ain't got to worry about that. All right. All right, cool. So so we start pivoting. Now you're working for FedEx. You're leased on. To I'm leased on. You're leased on to FedEx. So when you lease on to FedEx, you're only supposed to run just for FedEx. Okay. Okay. All smiles to the side of it. You're only supposed to run just for FedEx for insurance purposes because they have a contract in insurance company that they use called marsh so you you can only be with fedex ground got you how how was that business growing with fedex talk about that um i learned a lot i learned a lot and um when it was time for me to pivot i pivot and if you do well with fedex you can sell your contracts okay if you make good relationships, you can sell your contracts. And that's what I did. I sold my contract and then started full speed with warehousing So when, when, and, and never looked back. When you say you learned a lot, tell me a little bit about the things you learned. Because obviously now you have to hire drivers, right? So there, it's, You it's, have a hiring process that they use that okay. I mimic with FedEx. So the same hiring process that they use with me, that's what I use now with my drivers. Okay. The same safety meetings that they have. That's what I use with my drivers. Down to, they would send trucks. If they're going long distance, they wouldn't send one or two trucks going that same distance. They would send four or five trucks going the same distance. So if one truck had a breakdown and they have what you call double trailers, they would be able to pick up that trailer and keep it moving. Continuity of freight. Right. You right. know? Got you. All so right. you learn those things when you're with a big company. Mm. You know, you learn to do what to do if a truck flips what to do if a load shifts, what to do if a fatality occurs. That's all a part of running the transportation company. Right, right, 100%. Did you have, what were some of the, like, the biggest failures during that time or biggest challenges? Oh, my God. Uh, if you weren't trucking, you're going to have your first accident. Right. That's part. You just better pray to God. You have all your resources in place and pray that nothing, no fatality occurs. But you... When I was with FedEx Ground, you had cameras in the trucks. So we have cameras in trucks. We have every tool that we need to be able to support the company and protect that company as well. Right. So, yeah. Got you. Okay. So I mimic that. So my trucks, they have cameras. Right. We have safety meetings every month. Um, And you're going to be professional. You're going to wear a shirt. I wear a Pronto uniform every day. You're going to wear a Pronto shirt to work here. And if you can't, you better get out of here. Right. right. We're going to be professional over here. <laughs> now nah, I got you. So you start kind of mimicking um, your necklace. Mm -hmm, to the side. Mm -hmm. You start kind of mimicking, uh, you know, FedEx in terms of like the SOP standard operating. Yes. Procedures. I started mimicking, mimicking everything that they do down to the driver's road test. Okay. You know, when we hire a driver here at Pronto, you got to go for a road test. And one of my drivers has been with me seven years. He road tests every driver. And one driver, he said, he said, he can't drive. He cannot drive. Do not hire him. Right. And I didn't hire him. Right, right, right. Had that lead driver in place to make I sure. I have everybody. Maurice. He's been with me seven years. And I trust everything that he says. If he says, Tramel, he can't drive, he can't drive. Got you. Got you. Okay. And for me, I'm at the level where mistakes can't happen. So in order to work for my company, you need to have 10 years experience. 10 years? Wow. Is that like, is that, that's a man, that's like mandated? Is that's that just that's your own my personal? company mandate. I mean, we work with drayage. Drayage is a specialty freight, whether or not you know it. You have to even have special insurance for right. drayage. Right. I don't have, and at the port, the port is dangerous, you know? So you need a driver to not only have that experience for how to operate a truck, 
how to operate a load, but he also needs further education and how to operate inside of the Port of Houston. Right. You will not embarrass my company, first and foremost, and you will. we have to protect the safety of the public. At the end of the day, it's about the safety of the public. You have innocent children. You have innocent moms. You have innocent dads. You have people, and that truck that's 80,000 pounds can become a weapon, and it could kill somebody. So you have to protect the safety of the public and your company. And for me, I do that. I need a driver with 10 years experience, no criminal record. Mm. Gotcha. You gotta be Jesus to basically work for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna say Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying. gonna say Jesus because I have drivers that have been with me a long, long time. Yeah. And they just stuck with me. Got you. Got you. Maurice's been with me seven years. What's your, what's what's your key to retention to retaining your drivers? Dedication, dedicated routes, mm. and structure. My key. And to have to retain drivers is you need to have structure in place. Drivers like structure. They like to know where they're going every day. And if you can give them a dedicated route, clean environment, and pay them every week, you have no problem with retention. Right, right, 100%. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so at, you, you said you sell the FedEx route, mm-hmm. right? Okay. You make some good money from that? Sure did. Okay, you, you want to tell us how much? I'm not going to say. <laughs> All right, no problem. We, I, I figured I'd try. Back in 2017. I, I figured I'd give it a shot. I mean, it's still it's past the statute of limitations. We can talk about it. All right, no problem. I'll ask you again later. Maybe you'll forget. All right, and then you said you start focusing on warehousing. Federal, federal contracting. Oh, federal, con- I'm sorry. And federal warehousing. Con- and warehousing. How do you get into that space? Let's talk about that. So I am a current um, federal contractor. Of course, you need to have all of your ducks in a row, tax returns, and I am 8A certified. I'm in my fifth year of being 8A, SBA 8A certified. And um, again, have your tax returns in place, be woman-owned, get all those certifications, and go ahead and position yourself to be in the SBA 8A program or just position yourself to be able to do some federal contracting. How how'd you find out about that 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 as an opportunity? How did you learn about federal contracting at that time? Um, I would get emails a lot on my email about you know SBA eight A register your company this this, and that's what I did. I got my certification in twenty seventeen SBA eight A. Okay, I'm in my fifth year. Fifth year now. Fifth year how, SBA eight A. SBA eight A. But I've been in business uh since twenty thirteen. So what? That's nine years. That's nine. Nine years. years. I'm at the so now it'll look like success. <laughs> so it really is true. It will look like a success. The success takes 10 years. Yeah, yeah. What, what how, how did that change your business once you got uh 8 a certified and, and, Huge. and all that? Talk Huge. talk about that. Talk about some of the changes that occurred once that happened. Um I was awarded um a huge contract, prime contractor. I'm a prime contractor currently. What does that mean, prime contractor? Um, Meaning my company was awarded the contract, Mm -hmm. and we do the work. Okay. We don't sub it out. However, I can sub it out, but I don't. Okay. Why did you decide to do why? why Because I'm Tramiel, and I got to be in the midst of everything, (laughs) and I don't trust nobody but me. Okay. Okay. (laughs) When you got that contract, were you prepared to do that work, or did you have to get prepared to do it? Like, did you have to start leveling up to be able to do it, or did you have the capacity to handle that, whatever that contract was at the time? One thing business will teach you is how to think. One thing business... One thing school will teach you how to think, and one thing business will do is help you how, show you how to execute. You get where I'm, you get yeah, where I'm going with yeah, that? Yeah. So um, when you awarded a major contract, it's so important to have the accounts with Ryder, the accounts with Penske, the account with Premier, so that you'll be able, if you need 15 trucks, okay, I got my accounts, I can go to Ryder and grab 15 trucks. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I can go to Penske. I can go to Premier. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's so important. partners in place. It's so important to have at the federal level to have those partners in place. Because when you get to the federal level, it's just no excuses. Gotcha. It's it's none. Gotcha. It's come on. Let's go. Let's bring it. So, I mean, was that that challenging or scary in any way when you got awarded these contracts? Because they're actually putting demands on you now that you have to fulfill these contracts, right? Yeah. And like you said, you had to reach out to some partners. You probably had to staff up to... Like I tell- had to that's, that's staff up, um, staff up. 
one thing in the federal world, you may be awarded a contract for three years or four years, but you have a certain amount of time to, you know, they have the um, the physical year yeah. when it starts every year. And you have a certain amount of time each year to do that contract. You okay. see what I'm saying? Yep. So you can complete it in this amount of time or th- it, there's no, you see, what, there's no rush of what I'm trying to say. Okay. It's not, they're it's not, not like saying it has to be done by right, next month or whatever right, the case may be. Exactly. You, you just you make have time sure you to get do, to that point. You have time to say, hey, okay, we've been awarded. And then they say, well, what day are you going to come? Right. This is the time. Okay. Which my, this is what you need to get in place. We will be there such and such state to execute and pick up those, those the freight. Got you. How were you excited when you got that first contract? Did you even know what you were getting into? Like, was it I like, was nervous. I, I was scared. And then when I did my first billing, I was like, oh, I hope I'm doing this right. Right, right, right. Because <laughs> you, I mean, I hear about people getting contracts all the time. So it's like you receive an email and they're like, hey, you've been awarded the, the $10 million contract. To no. Do. Like, how, how, does, how does it work? Explain. Because um, I think there's some so, confusion about how, pe- how it works when a contract is awarded to you. So people could understand how the process works. So once it's a federal contract is awarded to you, you get the paperwork in the email um you sign off on it you have to understand your expectations when is the contract start date when is the contract end date for that year so if you were awarded a three to four year contract when's the start date when's the end date and you coordinate with that federal agency for example with fema you say hey my trucks will show up this day we'll go ahead and service and pick up so Mm. yeah so was it a FEMA contract? Yes. Okay, got you. Like, can you get an idea, like, what you were doing, like, low, low level? Like, just, just an idea so people could understand. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I know, I know. But just an idea, like, was it, were you picking up, like, hur- like hurricane relief or something like um, that? Picking up. That's you're, all I'm going to say. You were picking up some things from some place <laughs> that was picking government up, related. Yeah, picking up expired meals. Okay, Okay, got you. Okay, cool. And that was a. <laughs> That's how come I know about trash. <laughs> how do you think I know about the trash when he was talking? <laughs> so, so, and, and that was a three a three year contract. It's currently um. Oh, still still it's exists. still going. Oh, right it's now. still That's going. What I'm That's to still tell your you. bag. I'm, yes. I didn't know. I thought we were past the statute no, of limitations. No, we're not past nothing. That's why I was looking at you, right? Okay, 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 okay. okay. So you pick. So you picking up some stuff. All right, cool, yeah, cool, cool. Currently, currently. Uh, <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. Cool. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. All right. So you get into that. Obviously that changes your business because now you have consistency, you have dedicated freight and everybody's happy. The drivers are happy. Everybody happy. Everybody's good to go. All right. Then you start, you said you, what's, what's next? So you, so I'm currently, I've I've never left warehouse and go, never left warehouse and go go back because that kind of stemmed from 2000, what? No, uh, 15 to now. Which one? Which one? The, The government contract. Federal contract. The first that's been five prime, years now. The first prime I was awarded was in 2020. Okay, 2020. All right, so you're Still doing going that. Still going now. That's what all I'm right, trying all to right, say. Cool. All right, all right. I'm bad. All right, so let, let's let's rewind a little bit. Let's rewind a little bit to uh, the FedEx. We're going to yeah, go back to FedEx. Yeah, FedEx. That's right. I was there the longest. <laughs> like FedEx is sold. All right, yeah, we can talk, we about, talk that. about that. <laughs> all right, so let's go back to FedEx. You sell that FedEx ground contract. You make some money that you're not going to tell me how much you made, and then you get into warehousing, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so tell me well, about- Which I was already into you, warehousing because as an air freight forwarder, you have you to have a warehouse. warehouse. Yeah. Okay. So, so I never stopped. So you never stopped. <laughs> I never All right, stopped. so how do you kind of transition your business into like, I guess, more like full-time warehousing or warehousing for other people? Like what, what, right. what's the plan? Talk to, talk so so then once you there into air freight, then you go into dredge, okay. which is me. And so then started picking up at Can the ports. Can you explain what dredge is for people who Yeah, that's the that. ports. When you go inside of the ports. And you know what? I actually gave a live seminar on warehousing and the, doing business with the ports. And I wish everybody on my page should have came to that seminar. <laughs> it's crazy. This was the seminar yeah. that I actually gave in 2020, and I had only eight people show up. Oh, wow. All, all, of, the, all of that information. But you know what? That happens all the time. People are and never look where we infra- are now. Guess what's the boom? Listen, drainage. drainage yes. The ships are stuck in the water. Yeah. So everyone that came to that seminar, and I poured into them. Look at Marcus. There's Marcus. <laughs> yep. Blue collar was at my <laughs> seminar. <laughs> so, so they're ahead of the game. So 
know, we, there's, and a they, lot, there's a lot of rich people making some money. On that, this that's shit. what I'm saying. You got people they do, and, and my girl Victoria, there she is, right there. She's doing good. I helped her get her warehouse going, and she's booming. Okay. And Anitra, okay. Anitra, I helped her get her warehouse going, and she's booming. So I had some heavy hitters in this little eight people that's class that's there. Dope. Now you had, that eight, you had to write eight people. I had to write eight people, and everybody is flourishing yeah, now. Yeah, that yeah. is just one class. That's I really f- wish. I was trying to tell people, but it's you you can't say yeah. what you know yeah. when you at a different level. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kinda gotta be, okay, can you come? You y'all come. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to tell them what's going on. All right, so give us a little bit of a sneak peek of what was happening in that class. Help us understand. Even if it's on a high level, like just understand why Drage so, is important. How everything how it can that, benefit. Yeah, yeah how can it like first of all, Drage is a specialty freight and everything that before it gets into the stores, it's coming in on a boat, on a ship. So I taught them how the interchange, what it means to do business with the port. I taught them about interchange agreements. I taught them about pricing, um, everything that they needed to know to be able to scale, the, scale their company, not just going on a low board, right. you know, and getting a load with a flatbed load. I just, I gave them so much of my documentation. <laughs> I was just like, here you go. This right. is what I use. This is how I do it. They basically saw how I ran my operation. Got you. So you were doing the warehousing with Dre. So how does that, because that's on the trucking side, how does the warehousing play into it? Like, So a lot of times when you pull, we'll pull like a load that's maybe 50,000 pounds from the port. Well, they will need someone to take it out, take the freight out of the container, palletize it, shrink wrap, and distribute it out. Got you. So we're more of a distribution. Okay. So once you palletize it, shrink wrap it, who's coming to pick that load up from there? Based on, this is where you can either, I can have my trucks do it, or I will then call on the operator. So right now, depend on where it's going. So if I have something that's going to Chicago, I'll call on the operator. Hey, can you pick it up? And then they'll come here to my warehouse and pick it up. Okay. So outside of that, how, how, how are you, you're making money for the dredge by storage? Like the storage, I'm making money by pallet, all the accessorial charges that you can charge, which is so important to a trucking company to understand accessorial charges and what you're going to be able to charge a consumer, congestion fee, palletize, dredge fee, um, uh, trans load, floor load, all of those, the terminology that goes into Trage. Yeah. C- can you help us like understand like some of those like like the type of money you can make doing that? Like you don't got to say exact exact numbers, <laughs> but just so <laughs> just, just so we understand, like for an example, like if somebody was at the ports and they needed to, you know, bring a load and have it shrink wrap and palletize, like you could probably charge around this for storage warehouse space around like not exact numbers, but around. Well, first of all, I need to know. Bef- and so, so, so to me, the numbers change based on what the freight is. Okay. Again, so I need to know what the freight is. What is it? What is inside of that container? Okay. Is it an open top? Is it a reefer? Is it a dryer? What's in it? Is it boxes? Is it reels? I need to know. And then I can be able to tell you a price, which I have a price sheet um, to be able to tell you the price. What the price is. <laughs> how, how, did, how did you, like when you first got into it, how did you know how to price? I would call around to other drayage companies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, how much do you, how much pay, do tra- you charge, charge for this? How much for this? Right. And how much, and, and then when you get to storing like huge stuff that takes up so much space, you have to charge by the square footage. So what I would charge for a palace and a shrink wrap, I'm not going to charge you to store this big old, real that's taking up all of my floor space because in warehousing it's floor space mm. and floor space is so important and you have to protect the integrity of the floor space got you got you okay so at this point you're still at yeah you at your first warehouse right mm-hmm. how, how much square footage did you have over there oh my god <laughs> <laughs> we made it work though we made it work i love my drivers i love it we made it work child we had 2500 square feet over 2, there 2500 square feet yeah so y'all were going wide and up huh? y'all, <laughs> y'all and we going, were making it work did y'all have we high were making ceilings? it work we were making it work over there okay? okay okay we had high ceilings and we was making it work over there you know you got to start from somewhere no 100 percent. listen you, think you I have was, a warehouse I, yeah yeah I, mean, we, I wasn't i mean you know hey because I didn't have this big 20,000 square foot where right. I'm at now. Right. Oh, no. Right, right, right. We in 20,000 now. Th- times have changed. Uh, <laughs> it's not 
twenty five hundred no more. We, we done ten x that. But but okay, all right. So you you you're in a smaller space, obviously. Um, how, how are you getting your customers? How are you word of mouth? That? Believe it or not, you guys, when you are in a specialty like cold storage, um, now I have reefer plugs. Your they importers will refer you other importers. Mm. So I literally, I don't have to do any advertising. Right. I don't do it. So it's almost like once you do work for one per person or a couple of people, they're just like, well. We trust check, her. Check, we trust right. her. Check, check her out. We, tr she, we check trust Pronto her. Out. They took care check of Check Pronto out. They, I mean, people will actually, they will carry your company. Mm. And you don't like, I'm, of course, when you type in Pronto Shipping, I pop right up on Google. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, they will literally Google and word of mouth. What what's the what's the difficult part about warehousing that people make? Because everybody wants to have a warehouse. It sounds easy. No, what, it's what, not. It, it, it's not. So what's hard about it? What's hard about warehousing? Um, before you get that cus first customer, be ready to put up. Be ready to go through two to three hundred thousand mm. dollars. Be ready, because you got to get your warehouse prepared on the software. You got to get you know all of your tools to operate a for, uh, operate a warehouse you you know get be prepared to spend that money right you have to have a forklift driver right yeah forklift driver you, in the software just the software alone the software costs the that software much? you have to have inventory control yeah like software you have to know where your inventory is right. in your warehouse right got you but i mean when you start off you pallet start off labels like i have a software for pallet labels i have a software that i use just for is inventory control management you have to you know and then you have to have another software for accounting right so you have like three softwares i probably spent about 20 grand just on software just on software just on software got you all right so did you ever like ha have any how, how many people did you have like working in a warehouse at that time cuz it, it was a smaller warehouse at the you time you mean my right? chimney rock location yeah your chimney rock yeah it was when me you... and my driver's child okay <laughs> So they, they were the doubling. Drivers will be they like, were doubling I'm as sitting up here driving a truck, and then I gotta help you warehouse. <laughs> so they were doubling they were as with me. guys in the warehouse the and guys drivers. Guys were mad. Oh at man, they must have loved you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Maurice <laughs> would be like, man, I done been here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man. I'm working in a warehouse. Wow. And so they stuck it out with me, and and now we're here. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the progression. So you start out in the twenty five hundred square foot warehouse and then tell me about what happens next after that so then i came here okay i grew you grew and boy did i grow now now <laughs> now let me ask you this did was you, i nervous yeah absolutely now did you make the decision to move because you had just an influx of uh, customers yes. and a lot going on to where you needed extra space correct Okay. Okay. Correct. Got you. But you like you 10 X in space, right? Yes. So what, what was the thought process behind, behind that? Um, the thought process was I was awarded another contract through the state of Texas and the contract was, guess what? Storage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And so that was the push uh, that I needed to, okay. to it, it, it forced me to level up. Got you. All right. <laughs> So when did when did you move into this space now the twenty five this space here I, oh my god feet. next month will be a year so you've been in there for a year a year okay a year okay. next month will be a year oh my so god that's I can't get that's in crazy a year. time flies time right is flying. I've been here a year. so so tell me the differences between running a smaller warehouse and this big warehouse now talk about that because this is a whole nother level of of, of business it's a whole nother level of business a whole level of um, commitment another level of responsibility. So like every day I'm, I have to plan today what I'm doing tomorrow and I have to beat the truckers. The truckers show up here early to get loaded. Like they're here at my warehouse ready to get loaded at seven in the morning. So I have to be here like sometime at six o'clock okay. in the morning. And these are not just your guys. These are other people too. Other people, right? As yeah. Well? That they're sending their trucks to pick up their freight from here. Got you. Got you. Okay. All right. So, um, all right, so we go to that. Okay, now I want to talk about the cold storage, right? So yes. when does that come into place? So the cold storage came into place when I moved to the new location. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. Now tell us about cold storage and what, what that does and how that changes your operation and your business as well. Wow. Cold storage is huge, um, especially you can't get enough cold storage. The expense of a cold storage, that's what costs me the most. Okay. Because before you can even get a single piece of freight, 
You have to pay for your freezers, your refrigerators. You have to pay for someone to come in and do the insulation and and hauling your floors. You're probably going to spend on your cold storage, depending on how big you have your cold storage, you're going to probably spend about three hundred thousand, three to five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, three to five hundred thousand. Okay, and and that is holding like what produce, produce, meats. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, got gotcha. you. So how how much square footage do you dedicate to the cold storage? So this side over here, my warehouse, this side is cold storage. Okay. Um, which I would say about five thousand. Okay. And then the other fifteen is climate control. Okay, got you. So, uh, oh, so so everything else is climate controlled inside. Climate the control. So you have this side is climate control, and then this side is cold. Okay. Got you. All right, cool. So so that kind of brings us to current, right? So now current. the operation is... So let, let me show you around. Oh, yeah, well, oh I we, forgot. You, I'm you, sorry. You, you can't show me on camera. We, we could do that later. We could, we, I'm we, sorry, y'all. We could, I'm just like... You can't just pick up the camera and go. <laughs> let me show you around. That is funny. That is funny. We're going to do that in a second. We'll, we'll go through and check it out. All right. So so now to kind of like just bundle up the operation in total. So I just, I basically scaled the company out. To the extreme, to kind of, you need reefer plugs, I got it. Okay. You need cold storage, I got it. You need climate control, I got it. You need this, I got it. You right. need yard storage, I got it. Right. Oh, you have yard storage as well? <laughs> yes. Okay. Is that on this facility also? Right here, back? if I, yeah. Right, right, right. You can just pretty much do whatever. <laughs> yeah, or go to my chimney rock location. <laughs> got you. Got, so at the other location, are you still using that for storage also? No, I just, the storefront and then the side space and then the back space. But so, I didn't need the small warehouse anymore because I got all this over here. So you just do shipping out so of I there? So I just do ship shipping out of there. Do you do shipping out of here as well? Yes, I do. Okay, so you still do the shipping here? I still here. do the shipping out of both. Okay, got you. So Still have my DHL U- U-Haul over there. Okay. Have U-Haul over there too. Okay, so out of all the businesses now, all, all the different like arms, like what is what, what are you focusing on the most and why? Um... Now my focus in my focus um with Pronto is expanding the storage space. Okay. Bigger. Okay. Um I'm in works or in talks um of purchasing a, a, a huge complex um in the heart of Truck City, I would say. <laughs> okay. Down the street. So okay. that's that's where my twenty two twenty twenty two is at right now. Got you. On the trucking side, you what, what do you what do you have going on right now? On my trucks, um, I lease. Okay. And sometimes rent my trucks. Okay. I'm not too proud to say. <laughs> <laughs> so based I will, on the need. Based on the need. For the most because part. I'm more into storage now. Got, got you. So you have those guys still working with the government contract stuff mm-hmm. and then some So of I more. I still have to keep my trucks because I still currently I need my trucks for my federal stuff. Okay. Got you. And they and they also will do other moves for the drayage stuff too. As yes, well, right? that's exactly what my drivers do. So they do FEMA and then they do drayage. Okay. Okay. Got you. So so that 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 pretty much rounds out the business we're at. So you said the next move is a bigger storage facility. A bigger storage facility. I'm looking at five acres. Five acres. Yes. Wow. How how much square footage would that be in, in the building? Um there is currently so would you be building it up from ground no, up? No, it's or is currently it? a, a a warehouse there now. Okay, um, that's about. Let's see, I have this. Oh, look at me, finna right. get ready to get up be and moving. go. I mean, I mean, if, if you don't know the exact number, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Um, it's currently a warehouse there now that's about forty two thousand square feet. Okay, damn, that's a that's that's double double in size it's again. Double than where I am. Okay. So is all of this kind of predicated on like the the contracts like they're coming into where it's like you need to keep on growing in size or is it like you just see the, the need, opportunity I see and the you're opportunity like, Let and me I just see the get ahead of the game right I see the opp- and that's what you do as an entrepreneur and when you find your niche you scale it right and then you also want to for me it's about building equity in my company okay so the name of the game is to purchase those five acres. 42,000 square feet and own my own facility. So now my company has equity in it. Gotcha. So at the name of the game, you want to build your company and sell it one You want to build it to sell. God, do you have a number? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't know what you would take? I don't know what I would if take. If somebody came and said, hey, we're going to I've had two this? offers already. but Two offers already. Yeah, but I want to build build some equity in it, put real estate okay. in okay. it, which means own my own five acres. Got you. Got you. 
All right, let's talk about Transportation Academy because we, yes. didn't, we didn't touch on <laughs> yeah, that Yeah, we yet. didn't even touch on you it. Know, we, we just kind of told your story, but I want to get into that also. What made you start the Transportation Academy? What was like the inception of that? Why did you want to start teaching this stuff? So I opened up the Transportation Academy, um, which is an online platform. I opened on Instagram officially in November of 2018. Okay. And I was going through so much in 2018. I had just sold my FedEx contract. I was, you know, moving into a different direction with my company. And I just said, you know what? I'm tired. I was tired of shady mechanics. (laughs) I was tired of buying trash trucks. And I just needed an outlet. Right. And to teach people, this is what I've gone through being in this business. And I'm going to tell everybody what I've gone through. So I was angry when I wrote this book. And every- <laughs> Curtis was like, is it- Curtis was like, girl, I read that book. <laughs> it was a bestseller. Curtis was like, girl, I read that book. You better hope you don't get in trouble. You naming the companies. <laughs> oh, wow. You, you dropping names, too? Oh, man. This is a tell-all book. It's, it's not just education. We getting some juice and tea. Oh, man. Okay. I was just like. Do they know, know they're in the book? <laughs> they know now. <laughs> that is funny. Okay. But I just kind of went through it. And I was just, I was so upset with the finance company and how they, they charged me all this interest rate for a truck. Right. That I didn't know because I was ignorant. Right. Which is not their, it's, I don't want to say that it's their blame. I have to take responsibility because I signed the paperwork right. to purchase this piece of a truck. But they take advantage of you because they know they know and that you're, you're you're new into the business. So they take advantage new. of a lot of people. And then someone said, "Did you know your interest rate on this truck that you purchased only two hundred dollars is going on the principal, and the rest is going on the interest?" Right. I said, "So you mean to tell me?" That these equipment financing companies is doing this and nobody is out there educating them. Yeah. Derek, that's when I released this book. That's when you released the book. I was angry with the finance companies and I wanted everybody to know. Got you. Got you. So that so that book and, and all that's that's for somebody new getting into the industry. Getting new, man. If you're new, because I'm so sick and tired of everyone thinking you're gonna be a multimillionaire in trucking. No, you're not. Sorry. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you're not going to be a multi-millionaire. A mil- I'm like, where are all this stuff going from? I'm just trying to see what I'm doing wrong. People making millions <laughs> and millions of dollars. I'm trying to see what they're doing. Because right. you're not going to net millions and millions and millions of dollars. That's the important thing, net. That's the important yeah. part. You can gross it, yeah. but are you going to net? The only way to get there is to scale your company out. Right. You know, you 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 got to be a consolidator. You know, if you want to consolidate on the drayage side or you can be an air freight consolidator. Do y'all know what consolidators are? Mm. Those are people that just consolidate the freight. They don't even touch the freight. They consolidate it from the back end, from when it comes from the air, from, from importing from another country. And it comes in here to the terminal. They consolidate the freight before it gets to the trucker. Right. And they don't even touch freight. And right. they consolidate and making $2,000 a shipment. Right. Right. That's 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 where the money resides. Huh? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> now there there are so many different you know things. It's I mean, so people many think bosses. of trucking as just a truck. A truck. No, and they don't think tr- about all the other intangible parts that go into the supply yeah. chain. That's it. Yeah. Once you become a part of the supply chain, then that's when your numbers change. So where would you advise somebody to start if they if they're looking to get into trucking? They love the industry, but they they all they see right now is a truck. That's the only entry that entry point that they see. What would you be your advice to them? Where where should they start instead? What would be another idea that you could give them? Lease your truck on. Okay. I did. Lease Le- it on with FedEx. Okay. Get a FedEx contract. Learn it. Learn it. I wouldn't even tell you to just jump right in warehousing. You know why? Because you couldn't afford the overhead. Right. If you can't afford a $2,000 a month truck note, your insurance is $2,500. You can't afford a warehouse to pay $25,000 a month in rent. Mm. Got you. Got you. So you would say lease your truck on. I would say until lease you get to what until point? you get to the point of where you know the company, establish the relationships, and can get your own authority going, and then make the money. Now, again, to make to run a successful trucking company, it's all about the least amount of liability for the truck and for the driver. Which means you don't make a gazillion dollars going from here to Wyoming. 
If you can make $1,000 going from here to 10 miles away, then you're winning. Facts. You're not spending no money on diesel. You're not spending no money to the driver. And you're not hurting and killing your truck. Right. That's how you win in a transportation company. Mm, got you. What are some other other niches that you would advise people to get into? Like you, we talk about uh, air freight. We talk yeah, about freight forwarding. We talk about so much consolidators. It's so like I just got a packet laying on my desk. I can't call out the company, but just to be an air freight consolidator, just a consolidator to consolidate the freight. Even there's one company when the when the when the freight comes in. Let's say someone purchased something from China, okay? Before it gets to the end, which is here in the United States, it goes through a freight forwarder. From the freight forwarder, it goes through a consolidation consolidator hands. They choose the warehouse where it's going to go to before you can pick it up. If the freight is in break bulk, meaning it's a whole bunch of freight in one container from different, different, um, different people. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you have a consolidator that is assigned to that company, to that freight. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Before it gets to Southwest Freight for me to go pick it up. Gotcha. If I'm a cuss, if that's my freight. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But if, if for, a, for a person who's hearing this, they're like, okay, that sounds great. You but, need to talk to somebody. But, but how do I become a consolidator? Like, aren't there people already doing that job? Aren't there people already have a monopoly on that? Like, how do I get in there? Like, how do I have my little no transportation <laughs> knowledge self and you start got You got to guess where relationships come in at. Okay. You got to get out there, believe it or not, and you got to network with the right people. And I'm sorry, I'm here to tell you, they not on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> they are not on social media. Where do you find them? Where do you network? I get emails all day. RTW, Associations. Our association, uh, National Freight Forwarders Association. Yeah. Get with the freight forwarders. Right. Mm -hmm. And just start educating yourself. And start educating and, and network and talk to people who are really doing it in the game. Right. And don't add value to those people. If I want to get to someone, I need to add value. You don't, I have people come in, can I get from you? What are you bringing to me? Right. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Right, right, you right. have to add value pe to people if you're trying to get to where they are. Gotcha. You can't just come to somebody. Let me let me just grab a couple loads from you. No, that ain't how it works. <laughs> when I want to do business with people, okay, so let, how can I help your company grow? Right. And we help each other. Right. That's how you get close to people. Gotcha. Nah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, so we're focusing on storage. So, sto is storage still under the Pronto brand? Yes. It's so, it's Pronto. Pronto shipping and storage. Is that you know what? what? You are the third person. So, do I need to change my name? No, no I'm it's, just. It's always I, I, I'm the company just, is Pronto Shipping and Packaging Services. That's okay. the corporation. Okay. But so maybe I need to do a DBA, Pronto no, I mean, Shipping and Storage. No, not necessarily. I'm just saying from my love, I'm just like, okay, well, how would I know it's a storage space? I mean, Because it's on the website. And people know. And people I mean, know you have me. relationships already. so they, They're already going to come. And they're already going to come. Right, right, right. And then people nowadays, they will just Google you. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't got to change your name. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> not for me at all. All right, cool, cool, cool. So we, we talked about Transportation Academy. We talked about your business, where it's at today. Um, are you enjoying yourself? Are you having fun? Or do you love doing this? How how much time do you have left doing in in, trans, in storage, warehousing? Like, t tell me about your quality of life. Like, do you enjoy it? Wow. That's a deep question. Quality of life. I don't have much of a life. Um, I shouldn't say this, but I don't have much of a life, but the life that I have, I enjoy. And what I mean, like, I don't vacation a lot. I don't do all this a lot. I'm kind of a homebody. So I'm at home a lot or either I'm at church. Or I'm with my daughter, Matilda. Right. So that's me. Um, like, like I don't travel a whole bunch or nothing like that. For me, being at home, peace of mind with my daughter, with my husband, that's what I love. But you're still able to find time to do the things that you love yeah, and be around the yeah, people. Yeah, yes, that you and love. be a, be around the people that I love. And when you get to a certain level, like you, a lot of people trying to c come to you, but I be like opportunists and 
Yeah. So you just kind of want to be left alone. Yeah. You just now mentioned your daughter. Do you involve her in operation? Are you teaching her about what you do? I'm teaching my one and only daughter. I'm trying to teach her. Yeah. Because I'm like, here, your mother is building something so huge, Matilda. (laughs) You know, I need. Is she interested in it? She wants to be an orthopedic surgeon. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Matilda's eyes on the prize. So she want, and so me being the businesswoman, okay, Matilda, if you want to be an orthopedic surgeon, mommy is going to find you a ma- uh, manufacturer because I'm in logistics who's going to be able to manufacture your prosthetics and we're going to scale your company out. Mm. That's the part of logistics you want to be in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, orthopedic you know. surgeon. What makes her want to be an orthopedic surgeon? I don't surgeon? even know. She said she Googles. <laughs> she Googled how much money they make. Well, I, that, that's why she started at the top. <laughs> hey, she probably said uh, best paying jobs in the world and, and, and orthopedic and so, surgeons. And so top. her mother's in logistics and storage. Right. I hear her mother go, who manufactures? Right, I'm right, looking right. for the best manufacturer who can manufacture my baby. Um, so when she'll be able to serve and have a product to go with that service, because as a surgeon, you are a service. Right. You need a product with that. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so that's the mother business part. Nah, 100%. That's dope. <laughs> I'm not mad at that at all. All right, cool. So um, we're going to wrap it up. We've been yeah. talking for a minute. This has been been fun. Um, before you go, you have to give a final thought, which is basically the final it could be spiritual. Guys- Hold up. Let me, let, me, let me finish. It could be spiritual. It could be entrepreneurial it could be just a good word and then you have to let everybody know where they could connect with you personally and learn more about transportation academy so now go ahead give us your final thought so my final thought is i want to just tell you guys trust your process you're gonna go through everything in business you're gonna be broke but you smile at the end of the day. you're gonna have days where you don't want to wake up because a terrible accident has happened You're going to go through everything in business, but I need you to trust God. I need you to trust your process. And most importantly, I need you to take care of yourself and and, and grow through the process. Grow through it. It's not going to be overnight. It's not. I'm nine years in and I still learn and be humble. Humble yourself. When people, when I speak and I tell you stuff, it's because I've been there already. I've had guys to, you know, follow me on Transportation Academy. You can't say that. My homeboy made $50,000. <laughs> Dude, your homeboy did not make no $50,000 on no one load. Who you talking to? <laughs> so I need you to trust yourself. Go through the process and mingle with people who are not on social media. Mm. Mm. Look, look, look outside of that to find look other outside social media kind of can glorify and it it makes it seem like if you look and you follow me on transportation academy page what do you see me do what you see me doing uh for the most part i see just your life and then a little bit of pronto like you now what do you see me do on transportation academy what do you see me if you follow that page mm-hmm. i'm working yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. Yeah, you see work. trucks and you see work. Yeah, that's a fact. And that's what this industry is about. It's blue collar work and you're going to work for every damn dollar. And it's the eat what you kill industry. Mm. So there ain't no Rolls Royces. Ain't no private jets. You working every single day. It's the eat what you kill. Right. It's not passive income. Passive income, I would say, is Transportation Academy. I can sleep and somebody's clicking on my on my website and purchasing a book. That is passive income. Transportation where housing is earned. You're gonna earn every single dollar. Right. Okay. Hunt. Hunt. And gather. And gather. <laughs> and earn it. <laughs> but I need you to enjoy the process like I do. I enjoy it. I pray every day. I pray over my business. We listen to gospel music in the warehouse. I get the energy away from me. Yeah. Cause see the men be trying to come up in here with all that energy with that in their chest. And I had to bring them on down. Come on down here, boy. <laughs> Get that oh, out my out your chest. Oh, I need to be loaded now. No, 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 no. I need you to calm it down. We got this gospel music playing up in here. Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> so trust yourself. You're going to make it in business. Make really good relationships. I'm going to say that one more time. Make really 
good relationships. And believe it or not, you think this industry is big, but it's so small. Mm. Everybody know everybody. Right. Everybody know everybody. And humble yourself. I learn every day. I humble myself every day. I drive my little beat up pickup truck every day. (laughs) 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 The same one Jeff Bezos is driving. (laughs) The same one Jeff. Humble yourself and you can get to where you want to be. Yeah. And add value to people. Yeah. And they'll help you. That will help you get to where you want to be. That's a fact. That's several final thoughts. All right, cool. <laughs> and where can people connect with you, Tramel? So you can connect with me on the Transportation Academy on um, Instagram, Facebook. It's the Transportation Academy. Somebody told me that somebody knocking off my name. So <laughs> guess what? It's the Just Transportation easy. Academy. Um, I'm on Instagram. I am on Facebook. Here's my website, the transportationacademy.com. And you'll be able to connect with me. You guys, go and buy this book if you're new. I'm tired of having consultations with people and they didn't went through their white 401k. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Buying yeah. a truck from Joe Blow down the street. Yeah. And um, I think that's a perfect way to end it, man. <laughs> and we are about to take a, a tour of the, of the warehouse of the facility, beautiful facility. You know, this Tramel's a real deal. She does her thing, man. This is not, this is no cap as they say. <laughs> <laughs> no As they cap. say, this is no cap. This is a real deal. So we here. Definitely make sure you connect with her. Definitely purchase that book and any, you know, online material courses that she has. But she does this thing in real life. So we about to go check it out. Listen, Hustle Fam, you know what we do around this time. If you smell something burning, it's only your desire. Shamela and I, Transportation Academy, Pronto Shipping. We are out. Later. Peace. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go!